So the next thing I'd like to show you is something about kinematics, but this time the average versus instantaneous velocity. So maybe it helps us start with just average velocity. I've put little blinders on just because I have an example uh, I'm going to show you. But the way we find average velocity, well, maybe it helps to give a definition here. So I'm going to write V, and I'm going to say with a little average. That's what AVE is going to stand for. So the velocity average, AVE. So the average velocity is going to be, um, well, it's just going to be the change, the total change in displacement over the change in time. So that's what this means, the change in displacement. Okay, that's important. Um, over the change in time. And that's it. So it's actually pretty straightforward. Now this one here doesn't get an arrow because it's a scalar. I mean, time is a scalar. There's no sense saying a direction here. So that's all there is to average velocity. So maybe now I can show you this example here. So now I have something like this. Actually, let me just try to remove it completely here. Let me just see if I can do that. Oops, apparently my computer's going really slow to let us see this. I think it's because I'm recording the screen as well. Oh, my computer's really not happy with that. So what I'm trying to do here, I don't know. There we go. Phew. So, you're being chased. I mean, the situation doesn't really matter. So I just, uh, I'm a little bit weird with my examples as you're going to see, but oh well. So you're chased by an angry robot and the following graph shows your displacement versus time. So here you are, this is your displacement, so either S or you can use the D with a little line across it, little vector sign. And this is your time. So if you're running east, what is your average velocity? Well, all you have to do for average velocity, like I just showed you before, you just have to take a look and say, what's well, the total displacement change over the total time? So in this case then, if I want to do this, well, I start here. That's time t equals zero. And at time t equals five seconds, at the end, I have this. And I don't care about the path. That's the good news. All I care about for v average is just going to be, well, the change in displacement. So in this case, the change in displacement is going to be from zero to 15. Well, I suppose technically you could say it's 15 minus zero divided by because by the way, whoops, uh, maybe what I should do is actually show you the equation again, just to make it clear. You know, if you're on a test or something like that, it helps to actually write it out. So write out what you're actually doing. So change in displacement over change in time. Now in this case, then I need to consider, well, my end point, my displacement is 15 meters, east, of course, because I said I was running east. And at zero, well, then it's zero. So it would be the change would be 15 minus zero. In that case, it was really easy. And my time, well, that goes from five minus zero. So in this case, then it's just 15 divided by five. I don't even need a calculator for that. That's just three. Now it's important to consider the units. This is three watt. Well, it's three meters, because that's my displacement. See, I'm doing a displacement over time. I'm essentially doing a slope but I'm really only doing the slope of, you know, kind of the line joining these two like this. In other words, I don't care about the path. I'm just finding the slope of this line between these two points. So if you learn how to do a slope, some people call it rise over run. That's okay to say. So that means I've got units of rise, which in this case, units of meters, divided by units of time, which is seconds. So I'm going to say meters per second. And since this is a vector, average velocity is a vector, so I have to say what direction I'm going. So maybe I'll say east. So there's my full answer. So my average velocity is three meters per second east. That means every second I go three meters farther east. That's my average. So that's how we deal with average velocity. It's pretty straightforward. And the next one, I'm going to show you instantaneous velocity. But instead of showing you that little blinder thing, maybe that's going to be a problem. So uh, we'll just take a look at this. Well, let's look at the example first. We want to roll, this time, a can of Campbell's soup. My last name is Campbell, so that's why I like to use that as an example. Um, I usually do this in my actual classroom. So we'd actually roll this up a hill. So what this means, this is like a... 
know, just to show what's happening here, we've got like a little hill here, so some sort of hill going up like this at some sort of angle. I don't know what the angle is. And what I do with my little can is I just, you know, I start it off here and I just roll it up the hill. Well, of course, it's going to roll up the hill and it's going to stop and it's going to come back down. So if you use a little detector, like a little, uh, we usually use a little sonar thing, so it can actually tell the different the distance between uh, this little device and the can every second. So I would line it up like this right here, so that it could it could basically give me a graph of displacement versus time. And the question is, what's the instantaneous velocity at a certain time and instantaneous velocity at another time? And the thing is, that what's important here is that instantaneous velocity is different than average velocity. Average velocity was just the change in displacement over a change in time, whereas instantaneous velocity is actually different. This time, uh, we could say v, maybe inst, like this right here. So that's going to be defined as just the velocity at a certain time. Well, that makes sense. That's what instantaneous means. In calculus terms, if you've learned about calculus, but even if you haven't, what this really means is you're going to take the slope. Some people call this the gradient. But the slope of the tangent line at, um, at a specific time. Now here, this only works though, if it's slope of a tangent line, of a graph of displacement versus time. That only works if you do displacement versus time. Can you do this? So let's look at this example then. If I want the instantaneous velocity at one second, what I need to do then, maybe I'll do this in red. So at time t equals one second, I have a little point right here. Now the problem is now I have to find the slope of the tangent line at this point. If I could zoom way in, I would see some sort of, do you see how it looks like a line like this? So that's what I would do is I would try to draw this right now. So maybe I'll just try to draw myself some sort of tangent line right now. This is, this is a line that sort of matches what happens here. Now what I need to do then is find the slope of that tangent line. So that means my v instantaneous at this point is going to equal, well here I need to do this slope of just this dotted line. I don't care about the rest of the graph. I don't care. All I care about is the slope of this line. So maybe I can pick two points. Maybe I'll pick this point and I'll pick maybe this point. Because I need two points on a line in order to find a slope. So from that then I can find the, you know, the rise over run. That's how you find a slope. So this is, well, 4 minus 2 is going to be just 2 units. And this right here from 1 to 2, that's just 1 second. So this is 2 meters up and 1 second over. So that means it would be 2 meters over 1 second. So that would be equal to 2 meters per second. And we could say the direction is going to be up, let's say. So that's how I could say the instantaneous velocity at this time, t equals 1 second, is just 2 meters per second up. But do you notice how it's changing? I mean, it all depends on what point I pick. So see, look at this one. What is the can's instantaneous velocity at t equals 3 seconds? Well, let's look at that one. Maybe I'll make that one in a different color. Maybe I'll make it green. So that means at t equals 3 seconds, I'm going to draw a little dot here. That's the dot I'm looking at. Now, I want to take a tangent line of this. So what that means, again, if you could zoom just into this, you'd see a line going straight across. I hope you see that. So I could draw myself some sort of straight across line like this. Now, I don't know if you know about the slope of a horizontal line, but it's zero. That's because I'm going to have to do rise over run, but there's no rise. So in this case, then, the v instantaneous is just going to be zero. Now, we don't have to say what the units are in this case right here. It doesn't really matter because uh, zero doesn't really have units. Technically, I should put the vector symbol on top of this. So this right here is how I deal with instantaneous uh, velocity. So that's the difference. Now, last but certainly not least, how do I do instantaneous acceleration? Well, it's the same idea as with velocity. So this time it's going to be the slope of the tangent, but this time of a graph of velocity 
versus time. So for example, if I'm given this time a velocity versus time graph, maybe this is some weird looking shape like this, then I would, again, to find my instantaneous acceleration, I would just pick some random point and then find the tangent line and find the slope of that. So I can deal with instantaneous acceleration or instantaneous velocity or average velocity.